Hello everyone, this is Ashley Tucker. Thank you for joining me today. For today's card, I'm going to be using this stamp set from Colorado Craft Company. It's called Get Well and it's part of their Lovely Legs series. I have a piece of Nina Desert Storm craft cardstock in my Misty tool and I'm stamping that large image with Versamark ink. I'm going to color this image in using my Prismacolored pencils and I'm going for a no line coloring look. Using Versamark ink for this technique is really great. Because it's a watermark ink, it stamps really lightly, so as you color, those lines slowly kind of disappear. Some of the details can be a little bit difficult to see because of that ink being so light, so I actually have the packaging off to the side so that I can look at it for reference. For the couch that I'm coloring in, I decided to go with a kind of coral colored couch. So the colors that I'm using are Crimson Red, which is PC 924, Poppy Red, which is PC 922, and Pale Vermilion, which is PC 921. I also use my white Prismacolored pencil in the areas that I want to be most highlighted. Now, I don't consider myself a professional colorist with Prismacolored pencils or with any colored pencils, but I do find I get the best results when I start out really lightly and then keep layering in order to build up the color. Now, that's not going to be true with all brands of colored pencils, but with the Prismacolored pencils, it's very good to layer the color. They work really well that way. So when you first start laying down your color, make sure that you're using a very gentle pressure. You don't want to be pressing down very hard on your pencil. And starting out lightly is also good because the Prismacolored pencils have a very soft core. So if you press down too hard, you could break that tip really easily. Something else that I really recommend with coloring with your colored pencils is to keep those tips nice and sharp. Find yourself a really good pencil sharpener. I do find that some of the best pencil sharpeners are actually pretty inexpensive. The one that I use is a metal pencil sharpener. It's a magnesium alloy, I believe. I'll put a link to that down in the description in case you're interested. I believe it's about $4. As you can see, I decided to color in the two pillows and the Kleenex box with some really pretty blue colors. And those colors are Peacock Blue, which is PC 1027, Light Aqua, which is PC 992, and Aquamarine, which is PC 905. I also used my white pencil for highlights, as well as the Kleenex coming out of the Kleenex box. And then I used 20% Warm Gray, which is PC 1051, in order to add some shading to that tissue. This coloring did take a long time. I apologize, I did have to speed up the video quite a bit, or else it would have been a really long video. It took me a little while to figure out what color I wanted the blanket to be, but eventually I settled on this dark gray color. I used quite a few pencils in order to get the blanket just the way I liked it. I used 20% warm gray, which is PC 1051. I used putty beige, which is PC 1083. Sepia, which is PC 948. 50% warm gray, which is PC 1054, and 70% warm gray, which is PC 1056. And of course, I also used my white pencil in order to add some of the highlights, and then I also took my black Prismacolored pencil and used that on some of the areas that I wanted to be the most shaded. I found the blanket a little bit difficult to color because of all the folds. I was unsure if it was going to come out good while I was doing it, but I'm glad I kept with it because I ended up liking it in the end. I think it looks like a blanket. It's not perfect, but it definitely works. And you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. Whoever gets this card, I'm sure will love it even if it isn't completely perfect. I think as card makers, we often have to remind ourselves of that fact because a lot of times if we're working on something and it isn't coming out the way that we quite planned for it to come out, then we find ourselves wanting to throw it away. But a lot of times that thing that we want to throw away, somebody else will really love. And that's why we're doing this. I know I personally have to remind myself of that often because I'm kind of a perfectionist and I'm a big critic of my own work. 
Anyways, back to the coloring. For the mug that the girl is holding, I decided to use the same exact colors that I used on the couch. And then for her leggings, I used some of the same grays that I used on the blanket. And then I also added quite a bit of my black Prismacolored pencil because I wanted them to be very much darker than that blanket underneath her. I used my white Prismacolored pencil for the socks and then I used the 20% warm gray in order to do the shading on the socks as well as the line work. When I saw the plaid shirt that the girl is wearing, I immediately thought of a shirt that I own, so I decided to color the shirt to look kind of like that one. So the shirt that I own is a light gray plaid shirt, so I decided to use my 20% warm gray and my white pencil in order to make this a very light gray shirt, and then I used my 50% warm gray in order to add those plaid stripes. I also added in the 70% warm gray in order to do some of those deeper shaded areas. The line work on the shirt was a little bit difficult to do because of all of the folds and the way that she's bent, but if you follow the lines that are provided for you, you shouldn't have very much trouble. I followed those lines very carefully and while I was doing it, I was unsure if it was going to come out good because they look like they're all over the place, but they're all over the place because of how much it's folded and when you're done with it, it looks really good. For her arms, I decided to use Light Peach, which is PC927, Burnt Ochre, which is PC943, and Putty Beige, which is PC1083. And I forgot to mention when I colored in the leg on the couch, the colors I used. For that, I used the colors Tuscan Red, which is PC937, Burnt Ochre, which is PC943, and Dark Umber, which is PC947. All right, so once all of the coloring was done, I picked out a circle die from the Hero Arts Nested Circle Die Set, and I lined it up where I wanted to cut out, and I used some post-it tape in order to hold it in place, and then I ran it through my big shot. I'm sorry that the camera is so zoomed out right here. I probably should have waited until after this step to zoom out the camera, but all I'm doing here is extending that drawing to the edge of the circle and filling in with the same colors that I used before. I used a slightly larger circle die to cut a circle out of white cardstock, and then I used my ATG gun to adhere the circle with the image on it to the white circle so that I have a white border going around the edge. For my sentiment, I picked out the stamp which says, I'm praying for your complete recovery, and I stamped it onto some basil licorice twist cardstock using my Versamark ink, and then I embossed it with alabaster white embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. Once that was embossed, I did trim it down with my tonic trimmer so that it was a small strip. Next, I took a piece of slate cardstock from Simon Says Stamp and I cut it down to be four and a quarter by four and a quarter and I adhered it onto a card base with my ATG gun. I then took my circle and glued it to my card base and when I first placed it, I placed it very gently so that I could still adjust where it was placed and I just eyeballed where the center of the card was and once I was happy with the placement, I pressed down. I added some foam tape onto the back of my sentiment strip and then I popped it up onto the lower right hand side of the card. I wanted to keep the embellishments for this card pretty subtle and simple. So I found these two white hearts. These are tiny puffy stickers from Doodlebug. So I placed both of those above the sentiment and then I took this one sequin and this comes from the Girl's Best Friend sequin set from Simon Says Stamp and I glued it right below the sentiment using my Gina K Connect glue. And with that, this card is all done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed this card design featuring the stamp set from Colorado Craft Company. All of the supplies that I used for today's card can be found in the description down below. If you enjoyed watching today and you're brand new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can see all of my future videos. I'll be back with a new card real soon. Until then, I appreciate all of you and I hope you have a good day today.